G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. It's time for the round six edition of Just The Tips. I had a, another bad week of footy tipping. I got four out of eight. A few genuine upsets, a few teams making statements with their backs against the wall, um, particularly in the first couple of games. We had the Lions completely outclassed the Ds. The, the scoreline probably flattered Melbourne in the end with how well Brisbane played. Uh, the Bulldogs were nowhere near Essendon in that game as well, which took me by surprise. I got the Giants right just... That nearly obviously went the other way with St Kilda making a late charge. Adelaide were too good for Carlton in one of the games of the year. I did change my tip back to Gold Coast from Hawthorne, and thank God I did. I tipped Hawthorne last week. Last minute changed it, and uh, that kind of rescued my tipping. Uh, it would have been even worse. The power just got over the line against Freo. That could have gone either way. Geelong over North went pretty much as expected, and I didn't even tip the Eagles, who had a win over Richmond. So before we crack into round six, uh, just forecasting that a little bit, I reckon there's going to be some more wacky results. So I've got a few juicy tips here, and I feel like I'm going to change my mind again, but we'll see. We'll see. But first, before we get into round six, let's talk about those who are winning our footy tipping and fantasy competition. So if you're unaware, you can find all the league information down below. We run a footy tipping competition for both members and just general subscribers, and we also have a fantasy league as well. So if you want to get involved, it's not too late. Also, while you're there, you kind of have to scroll past the subscribe button to get to that information. So if you are enjoying the content or want to see more AFL content, subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go through it. So in our members competition, the winner of the week was Marry Me Marcus B, who got seven with a margin of 16. And I will say, nobody got a perfect eight this week. So that makes me feel a little bit better, although I still wouldn't say that I did particularly well. Then we have the general tipping winner uh, was Gus Cluggage with seven and a margin of 11. So well done to those two. Our overall leader of the members tipping league is Chief Water for the second week in a row with 36 and a margin of 160. While the leader of the overall general tipping competition is Hortop, which is the first time I've seen that username. So well done Hortop with a score of 37 and a margin of 129. We also have a new first time leader, if I'm not mistaken, in the fantasy league in Tully Griffiths with an average score of 2032. My fantasy team did horrific this week, but I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I got Sam Walsh in this week. The comeback is on, the comeback is on, but well done to all of those winners. So round six is an interesting one. We got a Western Derby towards the end of it, but it kicks off with a very intriguing battle between St. Kilda and the Western Bulldogs. Now, the Saints sit currently two and three, as do the Western Bulldogs. St. Kilda have been a little lackluster in the last couple of weeks, I would say. So had to come back from a fair way down against Richmond and then made a late charge to nearly beat the Giants last week, which was an impressive finish to the game. Although they certainly were the weaker of the team for three and a bit quarters, I'd say. Nonetheless, a good comeback. And they'll be taking on the Bulldogs, who are under immense scrutiny and pressure at the moment. They went down narrowly to the Cats, uh, which is somewhat of an honorable loss. The Cats are undefeated, but their performance against Essendon, um, well, they went, they got nowhere near them. And the Dons had just come off a 70-point loss to Port Adelaide the week before, and that one was a genuine upset, but not only an upset, but a one-sided affair. And a few guys like Dersma and even Caldwell had a pretty good game. And the Fords were okay as well in the absence of Wright. We saw Langford bob up for another three goals. Stringer had a couple. But it was a really disappointing performance for the Dogs. I mean, they have the wood over Essendon. They generally win and win heavy, I think. So to be trailing at one point by about eight goals uh, shows that it was a really bad day. I've got a funny feeling this Dog side is underperforming and the real Dog side is not as bad as what they're showing. Media pressure and scrutiny can make a club go either way. And I'm not too sure. There's a lot of talk about selection issue, tension at the Western Bulldogs. But I just think... We might see another performance here where one team just comes out and completely unexpectedly beats the other. And I have that feeling about this game. I think the Bulldogs are going to win. I'm going to tip them by seven points in this game. I think it was only last year the Saints beat the Bulldogs by 50 points in this fixture. But I do think there's a decent Bulldog side lurking under the surface. And this will be the game where it comes out. So, roughy call, underdog tip, no pun intended. But I've got the Dogs by seven. Adelaide versus Essendon is another really tricky game to tip. So we just covered Essendon a little bit there with their performance against uh, the Bulldogs. They look good. They look good. And to be honest, out of the five games they've played so far this year, I think four of them have been rock solid. A win over Hawthorne in what was a decent game at the time. They've beaten St Kilda. They've beaten the Western Bulldogs. They were okay against Sydney and quite poor against the Power. So it doesn't help that their one performance at the Adelaide Oval this year didn't go so well. Uh, but on the whole, like three and two, I think they're playing all right. Now this game has fluctuated in terms of favourite at the start of the season, you'd say the Crows comfortably. A couple of weeks ago, you would have said probably the Essendon would be way better considering how poor Adelaide were to start the season. But at Marvel Stadium last week, they had a stunning win against the Blues. Again, another back-to-the-wall performance where an underperforming side starts to click into gear. We saw Tex Walker hit the scoreboard. We saw Rankin and 
Bailey played well. Smaller ground could be a factor there as well. I know that's the case for West Coast when we played Marvel. We seem to somehow not do too badly there. I think it's probably more psychological though, which makes this game a really intriguing matchup. And I think on balance, like I could go either way with this, but I think I'm going to tip another Ruffy here and I'm going to go with the Dons here. I feel like the safer tip is to tip the home side, but I really think the Dons might be onto something here. If they can keep up this momentum, there'll be a lot of belief. They've beaten some decent sides at Marvel this year. The body of work that they've put in has been you know, more solid than Adelaide. However, if Adelaide are clicking back into gear, we know that their baseline is higher than Essendon. They were a pretty good side last year. Can they do it back-to-back? -back? I'm, I'm going to tip the Dons here. I could see it going the other way. So I'll say Essendon by 14 points. Collingwood versus the Power. This is a potentially really good game. Um, a couple of potential premiership contenders, depending on how far you've swung off Collingwood so far, but nonetheless, I think, still think they're kind of in this conversation and could find their way back into finals. The last two games were pretty good. Well, they were both wins. The win over Brisbane was really good. The Hawthorne one looked good, and then, you know, they faded in the last quarter. There is the home ground advantage here as well with the Power, who have won at the MCG this year, but against a Richmond side that is depleted, no doubt. I think it was 12 months ago that Collingwood beat Port Adelaide in this fixture, by 81 points or something like that. It's not the same Collingwood though. And I think while they have improved over the last fortnight before their buy, I don't really feel that confident that the Pies are gonna win this game. The Power have looked pretty good this year. They've had uh, just the one loss. The last fortnight was interesting. They torched Essendon and then just snuck over the line against Fremantle. That was a tough game. Fremantle have impressed me. A win's a win. They didn't look amazing, but they gritted it out, which is the sign of some evolution of that team as well, that they can grit out these tough wins. Maybe they weren't the better of the two teams for the whole game, but regardless, I just feel a little bit more confident in the power for some reason. And I think I'm going to tip them to win this game by 12 points. The next game's Carlton and GWS. Man, this is an unreal round. Two of these sides were the, the two sides that shocked everyone by making it to prelims last year. And uh, I also think of the final round of the season where GWS came and uh, schooled Carlton. Now, that could have been an off day, who knows? But I feel like the Giants match up all right against the Blues. They did play earlier in the season last year where both teams were out of form a little bit and Carlton did get the win. Both teams have come a long way since then. So as for recent form, the Blues, you know, just lost to the Crows. Again, they've been pretty rock solid and were beaten by a team that wanted it more. A little bit of adversity late in the game as well. I think they had a couple of injuries, but nonetheless, they still lost the game. And the Giants, you know, were caught napping a little bit in that last quarter against Secuda. And I think they've looked a little bit shaky over the last couple of weeks. I still rate them. They're still undefeated. But, you know, a few weeks ago, I would have tipped the Giants to win this game. But I'm actually thinking that Carlton are the ones to make a statement here. They're the ones who have just come off a disappointing loss. The Giants sort of got away with theirs. Sam Walsh is back in this team. He was unreal last week as well. I'm going to tip the, the Blues to make a bit of a statement here. They'll only win by 16 points, but I think this is a heavyweight battle, and I think the Blues will get up this week. Brisbane versus Geelong. Wow, this is really one of the best rounds we've seen this year, at least on paper. Okay, so the Lions have uh, snapped back into gear. Okay, so they smashed North Melbourne. We weren't really willing to take too much from that. And then they went to the G and beat a Melbourne side that's been pretty damn good this year. And not just beat them, I think they were leading by seven goals in the last quarter or something like that. They picked apart Melbourne with precision. Their midfielders got first hands on the footy. Cam Rayner seems to really thrive in that inside role when he gets a good extended run at it. Cameron found a little bit of form. I think they're just looking, you know, closer to the product of the Brisbane Lions that we saw last season as well. So this is going to be a tough fixture for Geelong, but Geelong have also not put a foot wrong this year either. Last week, again, torch North Melbourne. North Melbourne don't really have any tall defenders. Youngest list in the competition, so I didn't really read too much from that. But they've had some tough battles, and they've won those games. I think this is their toughest fixture yet, and it's at the Gabba. So I think on this occasion, I think I'm going to go for the home side. I think the Lions have really brought back momentum, and there's a real sense of urgency that they can't really afford too many more slip-ups. So I think they're going to attack this game hard. I think Geelong's too good to not at least get close. So I'm going to tip the Lions by 12 points here. This is really a good round of footy. Then we've got a Western Derby, and I suppose everyone will have different perspectives as to how good this game shapes up to be. Uh, but obviously, given West Coast's recent form, I think we can hope to expect a better contest than uh, you know we might have expected four or five weeks ago. So for West Coast, the last two weeks, they've gotten a little bit more reward for some slow improvement over the course of the season. And Richmond, whilst quite depleted, no doubt, um, you know, we were heavily beaten in the contested side of things. And that's where West Coast has been strong this year. And West Coast were able to just hit the scoreboard a little bit more, put some distance between the two sides. And that follows up from a really encouraging performance against Sydney where their pressure rating was fantastic. So a lot more reason to be optimistic about the Eagles. I mean, it's not crazy to think they're a chance to win this game, whereas that seemed the case at the start of the season. Now let's talk about Fremantle. And I think I have to give them credit as well. As funny as it is to laugh 
at their two recent losses. I'm just being facetious there. I, I, I would say that they have risen in my estimations despite both results not going their way. They're obviously not putting scores on the board. They've Mid-forward connection continues to be a problem. It doesn't seem to be a four-line talent issue. We know they're talented there. So they're doing a really good job of restricting their opposition. Like, the scores against them. I think in the last two losses, I think both scores have been in the 60s. They kept Adelaide to 30 and only scored 60 themselves. So they're just not hitting the scoreboard consistently enough. On the other hand, though, I believe Sean Darcy comes back into this game. Luke Jackson swings forward. That gives them a bit more of a punch. And there's also the fact that West Coast has been a solid clearance side this year. But I think Fremantle is better in that respect, especially with Sean Darcy back into the mix so I'm obviously hoping for a good game if, if the pressure rating is up for West Coast they'll make this close but I think Fremantle don't have the real weapons to really smash West Coast like they did last year you could say they didn't have the weapons last year but you know West Coast did not show up in that game so I'll say this game is reasonable maybe the Eagles stay close and the Dockers run away and win by 28 points we've got the Swans and the Gold Coast Suns now this game is tricky because I feel like the Gold Coast Suns are pretty good in Sydney and they're putting together a little bit of a body of work that suggests they've really improved. So Sydney coming off the bye, previous two weeks of that, they were seriously challenged against the West Coast side who was scrappy, but really tenacious and put on a lot of pressure. The same thing with Richmond, except Richmond actually got the win. So we're a few weeks removed from Sydney showing some really good form, but perhaps they'll be revitalized by the bye. The Gold Coast Suns are coming off a very substantial win against Hawthorne. Clearance game has been unreal, particularly headed by Matthew Rao. Both sides generally are shaping up all right. And, you know, Sydney are much improved on last year, that's for sure. And this might be the best evolution of the Gold Coast Suns we've seen. So clearance battle will be interesting. The Sydney Swans haven't been bad in this respect, despite their injuries. They've got some real midfield weapons. But if Matthew Rao can really start to give his team first use, you never know. You never know. I am still going to tip Sydney here. But I think even last year, you know, the game was kind of close. And I think the year before that, the Suns actually won this fixture. On that note, though, I'm going to say the Swans snap out of a little bit of a form slump after the bye. And they win this game, but narrowly by 16 points. And finally, the Roos and the Hawks do battle at Marvel Stadium in a game that is genuinely interesting because it's somewhat evenly rated. And I think everyone will have a different uh, perspective on how evenly rated it is. But both of these sides have struggled to start this year and the last two winless sides in the competition. So you'd think, unless there's a draw, there will be one winless side following this game. So who's it going to be? Now, the Hawks have looked lackluster. I mean, they had a really good late charge against the Pies last week. Forgive me, I mean gather round. And then against the Suns, they were well beaten. Getting beaten in a lot of key stats. However, I think it's worth noting that this time last year, they also were the worst team in the competition, or at least on the ladder. And then about round 10, they clicked into gear. So I would still hold space for the possibility that that happens again with the Hawks. And they did beat the Ruse early in the season last year. And I think that was to give the Ruse their first loss of the season after going 2-0. and So there's plenty of reason to think Hawthorne will win. The Ruse, by contrast, again, like I kind of forecasted this at the start of the season. I think we can all agree that there's talent there, but they're really lacking experienced senior players. You know, you contrast what West Coast and North Melbourne are doing right now. If you, if you look at who the best performers are at West Coast, they are generally the senior players. And I think North went into this season lacking them. And then Taron Thomas, who's more or less a senior player, at least by, you know, experience at this rate, they lose him. I mean, they've left themselves a little bit exposed. And then also the lack of tall defenders has seen them caught out against sides with good tall defenders like Geelong and Carlton. And even Brisbane's sort of got a hold of them as well. So plenty of reasons to doubt both sides. Um, and I say that respectfully. <laughs> I'm going to go for a roughie here. I think the logical tip is probably Hawthorne, but I'm going to say that the Ruse actually get a win. I don't know what it is. Clarkson versus Mitchell, this would be a great game. The Hawks got this win last year, but I think, I think the Ruse will make a statement here. Both teams will see this as an opportunity to, to make a statement that they're not as bad as the first five weeks have suggested. And I've just got this gut feeling, and like most of the tips this round, they've been based on gut feel. I think the Ruse are going to win this by 16 points. But anyway, guys, those are my tips. Let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with. I'm going to guess that there's going to be more disagreement than ever with these tips. I've gone a bit ballsy. I haven't done that on purpose to make the video more interesting. That is genuinely how I felt when I looked at all the fixtures today. Those are my tips. Saints fans are going to hate me. I still think the Saints are better than the Bulldogs. I'm just tipping the Bulldogs for a statement win. And we see that so often in the first couple of weeks of the season or a couple of months. But thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.